Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a series on bash programming. Bash programming is really two things combined, if you will. It's bash and it's programming. That's not just designed to sound stupid, it is in fact true. So we're going to talk about sort of both facets here, but we will focus on the second. It's about bash because if you're completely incompetent on the command line and you don't know what command line tools you use to do stuff, then your scripts are going to kind of suck and you're going to do things the hard way and it's going to take you a very long time. For this, I have an, a sort of more or less already existing basic shell course where we sort of cover bash and the basic tools that are available to you on the command line in Linux or really any Unix. Bash programming, which is what this is about, is taking that knowledge of how to work on the shell and do one or two things at a time on the shell, taking that and scripting it, and adding the sort of ingredients of programming that we covered in the Ruby Basics course, you know, which really wasn't a Ruby Basics course, but rather a Programming Basics course. So we're going to sort of fuse those two things together, and that is this course, and I hope that explains why we're doing it in this order. We're not going to focus on the specific tools that we're going to be using in our scripts, which are really just collections of statements that you could do on the shell. We're not going to focus too much on that. We're going to focus on what happens when you take that, put it together with some programming principles, and try to write useful, reusable scripts that save you time, do things intelligently, and uh, can serve as good documentation for other people that you're working with, even if you're just doing this as a hobby. The first time you decide to like rent a server with a friend and do a couple of cool things on it, other people are going to be needing to troubleshoot and read your scripts. So it really, really pays off if you learn how to do it well. The other thing is you're going to read your own scripts six months from now. And if you just hacked something together that works but is unreadable and you felt really clever about it, you're going to feel a lot less clever when it takes you exactly that long again to modify anything because understanding it is so hard. You're not saving yourself any time or doing yourself any favors. Okay, so what's Bash good for? Bash and shell scripting, it's really for light task automation. Uh, I, I love this. The uh, Linux and Unix handbook says this, but light task automation is exactly right. We're talking about backups here. You're not going to you know, write your weather modeling software in Bash. Of course, someone will argue, and they always do, oh, well, you can, because, you know, it's Turing complete, and you can do whatever, you can use it like any other programming language, and Bash isn't any worse than anything else, and I'm not saying that it's worse. I'm not. What I am saying is, you know, if you lock Picasso in a room and didn't give him any art supplies, he, he would make art on the wall with his own feces. I don't know. You or me, someone would walk back into that room, and we'd just be a guy smearing poo on the wall. And that's what I'm saying. Of course, a very talented developer can take something like Bash and use it for something that it is not very good at and still make it work. I'm not debating that. However, the place where Bash shines is not writing complex software. It's not creating an object-oriented language out of it. The place where Bash shines is light task automation. Doing your backups. It's for small, repetitive jobs that you want to script and you want them to be reasonably portable so that if you want to use them again, you can use them on any Linux or Unix machine and you don't have to worry about things like, I need a huge Ruby environment installed. Okay, use shell scripting where it's appropriate and use other tools where they're appropriate. This course hopefully will give you some idea, some sort of intuitive feeling for where Bash is appropriate and where other tools are appropriate, like when it's time to switch to Python or Ruby. The rule of thumb, if you just want to get something out of this right now, if you're writing more than like 100 to 150 lines of code in a bash file, you probably want to be using a, a different programming tool for that. You probably want to be using Python, Perl, Ruby, what have you. Okay, prerequisites for this course. You need to know some shell basics. We're going to cover them, but we're going to cover them very quickly. So we're going to talk about pipes, feeding the output of one program to another program as the input. Uh, redirection, redirecting input, output, errors. You should kind of know that there's like standard error, standard in, standard out, these file descriptors that we talk about that 
are sort of different places where output from a program or input can go or come from. You should just have a general, like, you should have already heard this once or twice. You should be comfortable, like, writing something on the shell and redirecting it to a file. It's good if you've got some programming basics, which is why I created the Ruby course before I created this, uh, but it's not essential. Um, I will make sure to use reasonably decent programming uh, etiquette to uh, make things readable, to comment things well, and to, and this is important, I will take the, the way that's maybe less optimized and a little bit slower and maybe more lines of code over a way that is super clever, hacky, and hard to read because you're really almost never writing code to yourself. And especially in the kinds of tasks that you're going to be using Bash for, performance is going to be probably one of your last concerns. If performance is an issue, you're going to be using C or you're going to be using Rust. You're going to be using something that is much lower level that lets you control the way memory is used manually, something that's maybe statically typed. And that's what you write your weather simulation models with. Okay, the next video we will start with just a, a very quick tour through some of the prerequisite stuff that you should be bringing with you so that if you're not bringing it with you, you at least aren't completely lost and can still do this course. There you go. I'll see you in the next video.